Hello and welcome to the first Game Mad English educational video. Today we are going to cover the topic of healthy pregnancy management. My name is Marga and I'm going to help you to revise it. Let's get it started. Pregnancy or gestation is a period when the woman bears a fetus and is caused by the fertilization of the egg by the spermatozoid. It lasts for approximately 40 weeks and consists of three trimesters. The first trimester lasts up to the 12th week. Second trimester takes place from week 13 to week 28. And the third trimester takes part from that point of time on to the end with labor or delivery. In each trimester, women have different complaints and concerns, so let's take a look at the specifics of each period. First of all, in the first trimester, the first thing that the woman would notice is her period stopping, and that may bring her to the thought that she's pregnant. Afterwards, she may notice the lifestyle changes. For example, she may get extremely tired for a short period of time. She may observe mood swings. She may face headache, heartburn, weight gain or weight loss. Um, she may have upset stomach with or without throwing up cold morning sickness. She may have tender, swollen breasts. The nipples may also stick out. She may have cravings or distaste for certain foods, so the food preferences also change quite a lot. Also, she may have constipation, which is trouble having bowel movements. For the second trimester, so on weeks 13 to 28, as the body changes to make room for the growing baby, patient may have body aches, such as back, abdomen, groin or thigh pain, stretch marks on the abdomen, breasts, thighs or buttocks, darkening of the skin around the nipples, a line on the skin running from belly button to pubic hairline, Patches of darker skin, usually over the cheeks, forehead, nose or upper lip. Patches often match on both sides of the face. This is sometimes called the mask of pregnancy. The woman may also have numb or tingling hands called carpal tunnel syndrome and may have itching on the abdomen, palms and soles of the feet. If the patient has nausea, loss of appetite, vomiting, jaundice or fatigue combined with itching, she should immediately contact the doctor as it may be signs of serious liver uh, conditions. Also, the patient may have swelling of the ankles, fingers and face and if case of extreme swelling, the patient should also contact the doctor as it may be the sign of preeclampsia. During the last trimester, women may experience shortness of breath, heartburn, swelling of the ankles, fingers and face. Still here it may also be a sign of preeclampsia in case if it's getting very suddenly or extremely. Also hemorrhoids may be experienced. The women may have tender breasts which may leak a watery pre-milk called colostrum. The belly button may stick out. Women may also have trouble sleeping as the baby is dropping or moving lower in the abdomen during the movements. And lastly, there may be some contractions being a sign of real or false labor. Right now, the healthcare system proposes women six options of care that may receive during the pregnancy. The first type is public hospital care. In this case, the woman attends to the hospital for all aspects of her antenatal care and receives care from hospital doctors and midwives. General pr practitioner care or GP care involves the woman seeing her general practitioner, so her therapist, throughout her pregnancy. And that's all. The private obstetrician or private midwife care 
is when the woman sees her private obstetrician or midwife throughout the pregnancy. So this one was pretty obvious. Private obstetrician and private general practitioner is the case in which the woman sees her general practitioner regularly throughout the antenatal period with specific visits to the obstetrician. The shared model of care, so this is the one that is the most enjoyable for the doctors and the patients, the one that is recommended the most right now, is when several health professionals are involved in the care of a woman during pregnancy, often in the context of a formal arrangement. Health professionals involved may include general practitioners, midwives, other primary care healthcare practitioners, specialist obstet obstetrician, and hospital practitioners. And the last one is midwife care. In this case, midwives are the primary providers of care for the woman. This may be through a team of midwives being responsible for care of a small number of women, team midwifery, or a woman receiving care from one midwife or his or her practice partner. This one is called caseload midwifery. During the pregnancy, the woman has to take many choices and making a choice or consenting should be an ongoing process of discussion between a woman and the healthcare professionals involved in her care. There are several factors that may assist women in decision making. This include determining how much prior knowledge the woman has, always asking open-ended questions and listening to the answers, Attending to verbal and non-verbal cues, so also assessing the mimics, the posture, etc. Clarifying the information provided by the woman. Always asking about the common misunderstanding and cultural features. Clarifying the information provided by the woman and clarifying the woman's understanding of the information provided to her providing easy to understand verbal explanations and written or audiovisual information in the woman's preferred language if it is available. It is important to keep some notes for the woman after the consultation as she may leave having still having questions that were already answered. And where appropriate, using accredited interpreters to ensure effective communication. Let's take a look at the algorithm of assessment during the visit of the woman to the general practitioner. So the first step is the one that is quite common. It's undertaking a comprehensive history. So we need to know attitude towards current pregnancy. Is it planned or unplanned? Does the woman wish to proceed with it or terminate it? We also need medical history about the medicines that the woman takes, family history, are there people with high blood pressure, diabetes or some genetic conditions, taking cervical smears, immunization or having a breast surgery. We also need obstetric anamnesis, so this includes previous experience of pregnancy and birth, also, we need some information about infant feeding experiences, the current situation in nutrition and physical activity, smoking, alcohol and other substance misuse, expectations from the pregnancy, partners and families involvement, cultural and spiritual issues, concerns, the prior knowledge about pregnancy, birth, uh, previous experiences of pregnancy, birth, breastfeeding and infant feeding and options that the patient knows. Also factors that may affect the pregnancy or birth such as female genital mutilation or cutting, psychosocial factors affecting the woman's emotional health and well-being and the woman's support networks and information needs that we need to assess. On the stage of clinical assessment, 
We discuss conception and date of last menstrual period and offer ultrasound scan for gestational age assessment carried out between 8th and 14th weeks of pregnancy. We also measure height and weight and calculate body mass index and provide advice on appropriate weight gain. We also need to measure blood pressure and test for protein urea. We delay auscultation of fetal heart until after 12 weeks gestation if using a Doppler and 28 weeks of gestation if using Doppler or Pinard stethoscope. Assessing a risk of preeclampsia is also important and we need to advise women at risk that low-dose aspirin from early pregnancy may be helpful in its prevention. We also need to assess risks of preterm birth and provide advice on risk and protective factors. We should also administer EPDS and the visit to the psychotherapist as early as practical in pregnancy and ask questions regarding the psychosocial factors that affect mental health is also required. Then we start precise maternal health testing, including checking blood group and antibodies, full blood count and hemoglobin concentration, and considering testing ferritin in areas where prevalence of iron deficiency anemia is high. We also need to assess risk of diabetes and offer testing to women with risk factors, especially with the family history. We need to recommend testing for HIV, Hepatitis B, Hepatitis C, Rubella, Syphilis and asymptomatic bacteriuria. We need to offer testing for gonorrhea to women with identified risk factors. Offer chlamydia testing to all women who are younger than 25 years old. And in areas with high prevalence of sexually transmitted infections, consider offering chlamydia and gonorrhea testing to all pregnant women. So to sum up, during the first visit to the general practitioner, the woman selects the preferred type of care. The doctor takes her history, provides her with clinical assessment, and in case of finding anything concerning, he needs to assess risk factors, including physical, social, or emotional ones. Uh, think of the needs for referral, further investigation or treatment, and preventive care. And in any case, he needs to tell the estimated date of birth and gestational age. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave us some likes, comments, and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss anything from us. That'll help our channel to grow. And I'll see you on Monday, the 29th of March, to discuss everything in depth on our Zoom meeting. See you soon and bye-bye.